Welcome to the Full-Time Drones Podcast, the show where we take a deep dive into the world of unmanned aerial vehicles and explore their many applications. We'll be speaking with experts and innovators in the field to discuss topics such as drone regulations, emerging technologies, and exciting new applications for UAVs. We will focus our discussions on the current and future opportunities for full-time work in the space. We'll also be featuring stories from drone pilots and operators around the world, sharing their experiences and perspectives on this rapidly evolving industry. So sit back, strap on your headset, and get ready to take flight with us on the Full-Time Drones Podcast. Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to the Full-Time Drones podcast. My name is Kyle, and I'll be your host for this season. And I'm actually really excited to introduce you guys to today's guest. Um, For those of you who have been following us for a little while, you've probably heard us talk about our online community that we're that we're hopeful to bring out our beta testing here this week and then our uh, full platform uh, at the first of the year. So today's guest is actually the kind of the man behind the scenes. It's been doing all of the development, both of the website and of the mobile application, um, the community desktop. He's, he's kind of built all of it from scratch. We had this huge idea in January of 2023 and, um, you know, kind of funny story how we got connected. I, was just on some local uh, word of mouth groups here in San Diego County. And I brought up that I wanted to find somebody who could do web development and potential app development, but I wanted them to be local because I wanted to be face to face and be able to work with them. And so I put that out in a couple different groups, had a few people reach out and I had 10 or 15 conversations and I just, I, I didn't feel like I had found the right connection yet. So I had a guy reach out to me and he said, Hey, I know you mentioned you want somebody local, but if you're willing to do remote, I've got the guy for you. And I thought, well, you know, at this point, what could hurt? So he ends up connecting me with Chris and uh, our first conversation, we're 15 minutes in and I'm like, yeah, this is the guy. This is the guy I've been looking for. I've got enough background in production and, and web development to have a conversation, but when it comes to actually doing everything I wanted done, it would take way too much time for me to try to learn it all. So went to outsource and him and I connected and, you know, immediately struck up a great working relationship and it's blossomed from, I want a more interactive website that is going to allow certain things to, hey, you know what, let's just build this entire online community that's going to feature social media and group chats and a full online learning academy, along with an in-store shop and a rental portal and all these different things. And so it's just, it's evolved so much over the last 10 months. And uh, so I thought, you know, we're coming out with the beta test this week and thought what better time to bring him on the podcast. So Chris, welcome and, you know, introduce yourself to the listeners. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. Um, I'm, I'm a pretty experienced developer and it was really cool to connect with Kyle uh, initially. And yeah, I mean, I'd, I just, uh, I love building social products and like customer facing products and all that stuff that has to do with uh, apps and websites. So it's cool to build this product because it's like a combination of uh, learning and e-commerce like all in one. Yeah, took took everything that you like to do and put it all into one and, and gave you a fun project to work on. <laughs> yeah, and as far as my end, I've been uh, developing software since I was a young uh, teenager. I started when I was 15, and I then I uh, went from there and worked in the agency space for a long time and then started my own thing, so. Very cool, very cool. How long have you been doing it um, You know, on your own, like outside of working for a company? Uh, I've been doing it a total of uh, really about 10, 10, 10 years as far as uh, working with the agency space, about five, six years working on my own. So uh, about a uh, li- little, about half of the amount of time that I worked with the agency space. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> how did you, how did you get into it? Cause to me, I, I look at it and it's still very intriguing. Even in today's age, I know there's a lot more access to resources now than there were 15 or 20 years ago when you were getting started. But how did you get into the space and like, what kind of 
inspired you to to do this? Because, you know, sometimes you look at it and you're like, it's just a bunch of numbers and letters and a little black box. And it's like, how does any of that make sense? So I'm sure there's something there that was like, I love doing this. Yeah. So for, for me, I basically, uh, when the App Store initially was launched with Apple back with the iPhone 3GS, mm -hmm. uh, I was super intrigued by the fact that you could release an app on the App Store. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was this guy named Steve Demeter that released an app called Trism, which was a game uh, where mm -hmm. you could play with all these shapes and the very like addicting game. And it was mm -hmm. alongside the other apps like the Moron Test. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and basically, uh, after that, uh, I was I was super intrigued by the fact that you could do that. So I eventually bought this book. It's about a six hundred page book. And mm -hmm. then after that, I ended up. Uh, basically developing my own app that got pretty well, pretty much a, a lot of attention in the app store. And then after that, it, it got really so high up in the charts in the app store that I was able to really pursue it a whole lot. And then I eventually dropped out of high school and uh, I took my GED. And then after that, I took two classes with the Big Nerd Ranch, which uh, teaches or like code school for mm -hmm. iOS programming. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. What um, what was the app that you developed early on? Is it still around? Yeah, so that, that app was called Brains App, but it's not around anymore. But it was this app where you can memorize shapes on each screen. It was very much like Trism, but mm -hmm. it was uh, more so centered around memorizing shapes. So like it would show you a triangle, circle, and a square on mm -hmm. one screen, like in a certain arrangement. Yep. And then on the next screen, I would show you four other selections of that same one, just in different arrangements. And you would have to choose within a specified amount of time. And if you didn't, then you failed. If you did, you kept going up through the game and it kept, kept getting harder and harder. Okay. Like eventually it would show you like 10, 15 shapes on a screen in different arrangements. And then you would have to keep picking them. Uh, gotcha. I updated it quite a lot um, up to about 75 different levels of those. And then mm -hmm. uh, I ended up in the agency space after that uh and i took it off the app store and then i eventually got into my own thing and you know about 10 years later so okay very cool <clears throat> do you have any apps uh on the app store now i know you know i've talked a little bit about some stuff but do you have anything that's that's current that people could actually go look at i don't have my own apps i have many client apps that, I, that i've built that are on the app store uh I have my own uh, website. It's not an app, but uh, a website uh, that I work on pretty frequently. It's called Artist Access TV. Mm -hmm. It's a system that allows you to create like your own social platform, like Facebook, but it's uh, it's your own. Yeah, uh, it's very much like tailored, kind of like how I'm building the Full Time Drones app. Yeah, uh, but it's like it's for artists. Yeah, very cool. What are some of the most notable uh, either websites or apps that you've worked on that you're allowed to talk about. I know sometimes you have NDAs and, and can't talk about certain things, but um, what are some of the, the most notable ones that you've worked on that you can share? So for me, the most notable ones uh, in, the, in the past have been a, a system that's like a learning management system for Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of mm -hmm. Wall Street, <laughs> yep. which is very much similar to what I'm building for years. It's, uh, it's like an e-learning platform combined with uh, e-commerce. Yep. Um, and the other big one that I've made, which is on the app store anymore, is an app for Nicole TV. She's a super well-known YouTuber and TikTok mm -hmm. star. Mm -hmm. uh, she's really well known for all these like famous GIF images that pop up on Facebook and stuff. Yeah. Um, and probably the other most well-known product I've had my hands on is uh, Carter's and Oshkosh. That was mm -hmm. very like early on in my career, but I just helped design their user generated content section on their on their website. Very cool. Um, trying to think, I don't I don't think there's any other like super super well known ones other than those that have like come out. But I've also worked with uh, really large people uh, in terms of like developing software that's more like internal. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, Paulo Dodon, he's a like really, really well-known record producer. Uh, he mm -hmm. produced like Love in this Club by Usher. Yep. Um, so I built some stuff for him and that's how I ended up building Nicole TV's software. So. Okay. Very cool. Quite a lot. 
Very cool. And so like working with a music producer, is that, do you have a music background or is it just got connected with this guy and is really cool? Yeah, so I actually have a music background. I, um, I basically am a musician on the side and I produce electronic music, kind of like Calvin Harris or Marshmallow or any of those guys. It's very similar to that. Yep. And okay. uh, I met Polo because I have a remix on YouTube that hit 26 million total views uh, over the last <laughs> years. Um, yep. It was a remix of a song, I Hate You, I Love You by Olivia O'Brien. Um, mm -hmm. And I released that in 2016. And within about uh, a week and a half, it had about 10 million views. So about It scaled to about half of that pretty quickly. Um, yeah. Over the last years, it's, it's like gotten a ton more views. So it's yeah. opened the door to a lot of very like musical type people. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I, I, having a music background, I know you and I, I, like I just discovered we've been working together for 10 months, like talking weekly and just learned that uh, you have a musical background and, you know, I think we've even talked about, um, you know, an idea I had for an app years ago and never put anything into it just busy with life and everything else but um yeah it's cool i used to play music out four or five times a week back in the in florida and you know the whole southeast region you know doing acoustic shows doing full band shows played some pretty big shows and uh so it's kind of cool the the things you you learn as you start working with somebody that um you know you have some very similar interests so yeah, that's, cool. that's very cool. I, I come from a very musical background too. My my uh, mom is in the Atlanta Symphony, so oh she, wow, what does she? I, what does she I play? Raise around. She plays the double bass, so she sits okay. like first chair in the in the section. Like as you look at the symphony, it's on the very right hand side and on the very first chair there. Uh, my awesome. late father was first chair, and she was second chair, uh, and that's that's how they met. So she she like interchanged with him okay. uh, into first chair. Okay. That's, that's really cool. That's cool. That's how they met. And it's music's uh music's a very healing. So that's, that's cool. So what, um, what are there any other, uh, projects that you're working on? I know you and I have talked about, um, you know, working on a big project over the next 12 to 18 months that we won't disclose too much information on. So we don't create competition, but, uh, you know, outside of, of what we have going on with the full-time drones app, um, you know, is there anything else that you're working on that, that you're excited about that you can share again, same thing. I know if you're in the process, you may not be able to, but. Yeah. So that main system, uh, that's my own, it's called artist access TV. That's a big one. And um, yep. another one that I'm working on, or I'm working on several AI tools at the moment that are really cool. Okay. Uh, very cool. So uh, a few a few of those uh, pertain to the music industry also. I'm working on an AI tool called AI DJ Tools. And basically, mm -hmm. it allows a DJ to go in there and, and log in, and they can generate an entire set list. And they can mm -hmm. generate um, social media posts and all that stuff. So if you think of like Jasper.ai, which is an AI mm -hmm. writing tool, basically yep. that, but for DJs. Um, so that's cool. That's one I'm working on. There's a credit repair tool that I can't say really anything about that I'm working on, but it's it's really really cool. It repairs your credit like through AI. Um, hmm. And I'm also working on uh, a lead generation tool that's based around AI too. Okay. Um, yeah. Very so, I'm very AI uh, centered right yeah, now. Yeah, I was gonna say that kind of kind of just. Uh, you know, sh shifted the conversation a little bit because it's AI is becoming a very big thing in the drone world. And and I know, so before you and I started working together, how much did you know about drones? And like, you know, were you immersed in it at all? Or is it, uh, you know, just as a hobby? Or, you know, what, what was your experience with drones before January of this year? Yeah, for, for me, it was, it, it's a, just mainly a hobby. I've always like liked drones and like, the technology around them, but I've never like gotten into them a whole lot, but mm -hmm. now I definitely know a lot more having right, like looked at it, that each of the products and kind of written the descriptions for each one. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it's pretty, pretty crazy how, how much they're taking over the world, especially like in law enforcement yep. and construction. Yep. 
Yeah, it's crazy how much they are now assisting in in a lot of different industries. But um, kind of talking about AI, it's become a huge, um, you know, hot word or keyword in the in the drone space where, you know, people are starting to automate, uh, you know, inspection work, people are automating or trying to automate flight profiles. I think that's, that's the one that's the most commonly talked about. But, um, you know, in your experience, just AI in general, um, you know, how have you seen it evolve? Because you're probably a little bit more involved than most of us are. How have you seen it evolve? And what do you think the realistic capabilities for AI are over the next, you know, three, five, 10 years? Well, for me, I've seen it evolve from like plain machine learning stuff that uh, a lot of software companies have like long used and way before AI became a much bigger deal than it is. Mm -hmm. uh, like I've seen it in how Facebook works, like a lot of their newsfeed is based on machine learning. A lot of apps are, you know, based on machine learning that have any like sort of algorithm. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it hasn't really like come to popularity as nearly as much as it has like the last year or so a chat GBT. Yep. Um, <clears throat> So it's it's really crazy, like how much it's it's taken over. I mean, like AI for a while, like has been around. It's just uh, it's not nearly been as much of a centered thing in our lives until uh, recently. So like Chat GPT, for example, and the GPT like three point five and four can write like like code, and it can write like website copy, and it can do like pretty much anything. Yeah, uh, and so like, if you look at that, and also like Tesla's like uh, autopilot stuff with the driving, and mm -hmm. the self-driving capability, and all the stuff that's going on AI, AI wise with like avatars online and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, the next like three to five years, even ten years, like it'll it'll obliterate a lot of, I think like jobs and switch them around so that people have to like evolve and like work side by side with AI. I think AI yeah. is going to take over a whole lot of what goes on in our world. Yeah, also, I, I agree. Revolutionize the way we do things. I agree. I think one of the, so one of the most common ones that comes up in the, the drone, especially in the utility space is creating, um, you know, AI to replace journeyman linemen looking at photos, doing inspection work. And, you know, I think a lot of people, um, think it's going to fully replace them and it's like hey you know ai yeah. as much as you teach it it's never going to have you know experience in the field so it will be a great tool to assist and it will make uh you know performing these inspections faster and easier and it will also aid in the you know the human factor of fatigue and you know you're just looking at a screen for 10 hours a day but, you know, I think ultimately you're still going to have to have journeyman linemen review the questionable images as you're even as you're training the system. If you get it to ninety nine or ninety nine and a half percent, you're still going to be reviewing images, making sure that, you know, everything it's catching is legitimate, that it really is an issue. And so I think same thing. A lot of people are scared of it. And it's like, hey, if you embrace it and I actually mm -hmm. hear uh, Gary V talk about it a lot is if if you're scared of AI or you're, um, you know, you refuse to acknowledge that it's coming, then you'll get left behind. If you embrace it and find a way to incorporate it, then, you know, you should be on the forefront. So I, I think it's, it's really intriguing to see in, you know, in every industry, but especially like with what you do. So have you ever tried, I'm, I've always been curious about this, you know, and I don't, I don't write code, but have you tried like chat GPT 4.0 and, and actually put in a line of code and say, Hey, there's a bug in here, find it and fix it. And if you have like, does it work? Is it legitimate or is it still kind of, I mean, the, 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 the biggest problem, the biggest problem with, uh, utilizing that alongside writing code is even though it can write code is, uh, it's come usually comes out as very generic stuff. So it doesn't always fit what you're working on. Um, gotcha. It basically like, you know, it takes, you know, the generic stuff about what it knows and like writes it out like as a, as a response. So if you're very specific with it though, you can get like pretty cool, like results, like help you along stuff, but generally with like yep. really advanced stuff, it's not 
like it's not it's not perfect so it's 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 good to use an as an assistant though so if you if you need to like start like uh, a certain method or a certain part of of the code and help it like structure it then Mm -hmm. like it's a good easy way to start that but in general it's not at the point yet where it can write complete software it's going to be like a you know a good few years before it can really like fully like you could sit there and say like generate uh an app that's like tinder like it it would it would take a really long time to you know get to the point where it can actually generate the entire app like like as you're talking about because there's no human element it doesn't understand certain things like emotion and stuff that you know only human can like put into code and like really create a great product Mm -hmm. so for a while i think it'll be a long time before it can really replace like an actual like job you know as like software developers and designers yep um but it's it's definitely on 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 the way to being a very like close replacement to like how smart developers are yep but it's it just it'll be a while before it can replace the human element and there's always going to need to be some sort of human element because the the emotion is what lacks with ai yeah very cool. Yeah, it's. I agree. I think it's very, very parallel to what we were talking about in the utility industry is that there's always going to have to be the human element, but it can expedite a lot. You don't have to hire an entry level coder to, to work on certain things, but that's. Yeah, it, it, it is great for uh, generating like stuff, you know, like in assistance and stuff for, for sure, though, like uh, yep. there's websites right now that can. Uh, there's a website called 10 web where basically you can generate entire landing pages uh in elementor for wordpress Mm -hmm. um but again it's very formulaic it it doesn't carry that human element so it's it's just as a good like starting an assistance point it's not like as a main thing yeah yeah no that's it's interesting um you know i'm I'm really curious to see how it evolves over the next couple of years. Like I've, you've seen the, um, I've seen a, a thing going around online where it's like, here's an AI generated song that Taylor Swift's going to write when, when her and Travis Kelsey break up. And, you know, it's funny and it even sounds like her, like it's an AI generated voice of her. It's like, it's kind of creepy. I've seen some stuff. Like I saw one yesterday where, um, the football coach from Michigan, John Harbaugh, the, you know, he's under investigation for stealing signs on the sideline. And, you know, it's like him standing in front of a press conference and he's like, we did it. It's the only way that we're going to get this crummy program out of the mud. And it's like, that's, he would never say that. So it's obviously AI generated, but it looks real. It's like, it's scary how that's translating. I've even, you know, looked into for some of our content creation, some of our courses, like, you know, you can go online to like, Hey Jen or, or Synthesia and, you know, upload some quality video in front of a green screen and they'll create an avatar of you. And like, I see these avatars of me and I'm like, that's creepy. That is, that looks just like me. It sounds just like me. And a lot of the gestures are the same. And so, so there, there's a very in, robotic, there's a robotic element to it though. It's very there is. like lack emotion which uh but it still is very scary where it's going. yeah that's the one thing i i've noticed it can't do you know if i'm if i'm teaching a course and you know i get excited about something or you know like throw a little bit of emotion in there or you know however you want to present it it doesn't do that it's just very monotone it talks just like this and it explains everything so it's you know it's not going to be used a lot but you know you can use it for some of your you know, more monotone stuff, but you know, it's also still kind of in the beta phase and really expensive to do, but it's been interesting to see, to learn about all this stuff as we've been working on this over the last 10 months, just what's out there that I had no idea about. And, um, you know, kind of seeing how it's evolved in 10 months. And adding a <clears throat> AI into what we're doing as as well, like uh, with mm-hmm. the AI system, there is is will be pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's different aspects to to allowing uh, AI to allow assistance of learning drones. Mm-hmm. Yep, um, about that, and even about the big project. You know, I think AI will be a, a pretty heavy force in uh, working on that, and so it's you know it's 
really interesting to see where we're headed. Uh, and you know, I think a lot of people who are putting it off are missing the boat. So if you're, if you're putting off AI or you think it's a, a fad, you know, it, it's coming and, you know, embrace it, learn how to incorporate it into your workflow and learn how to use it to make yourself more efficient. And, you know, you won't get left in the dust. Yeah, I think in, in general, where it's going to really take over eventually is with the business world and advising business owners. Uh, mm -hmm. cause they're, they're, uh, a lot of business owners that use like chat GBT and stuff to ask advice about what to do in certain scenarios. And I think eventually uh, it's going to lead to eliminating a lot of consultants that help like businesses reach from like, you know, the point A to point B with like scaling mm -hmm. to like an exit type strategy. Yep. Uh, yeah. I still think that you know, the human element still has to be there to an extent. Uh, but I think uh, AI is really going to transform like how businesses end up scaling to huge uh, numbers and sizes. Yeah. Right now it requires a lot of human intervention to get a business to scale to like seven and eight figures. Mm -hmm. But I think eventually AI is going to be the one that, uh, that scales the business. Like the, the AI like will connect to like all the bank accounts and all of like the business structure and the website mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And it'll like generate like everything for the business yep. and then basically scale the business by itself. I think that's yeah. that's probably where AI is like really going to take over is um, in the business sector. Yep. <clears throat> and I also, also wonder the finance. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say I also wonder like about taxes. You know, at some point, are you know taxes going to be you know done by AI and machine learning? And you know at that point, because I'm sure you know if you work with an accountant, an accountant can take advantage of every opportunity to, you know, hey, if you put some money over here, it'll save you a little bit of money on taxes. If you invest in this, it's, you know, it's before taxes and, you know, tax when you pull it out or vice versa. And, you know, here's some things that you can write off if you've done these things over the year or they, you know, they give you a tax plan for the next year is, hey, if you incorporate all of this in what you're doing and we can take advantage of some of these uh, loopholes. And, you know, does a machine do that or does a machine just say, especially like if the government or the IRS writes it, are they going to say, hey, take, make sure everybody pays every dollar they have to pay and no loopholes and no nothing. Yeah, I think the other area, too, that it'll uh, replace a lot in that regard is uh, doing stuff like legal writing and replacing mm -hmm. anything having to do with uh, law and attorneys and replacing uh, contract writing and really every aspect of like all the stuff you can think of. I think it'll, it'll like do a lot of that, but I think mm -hmm. it'll still be in a sense of, of humans at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually, I saw something on that where uh, it was the first time that somebody was trying to sue AI like an AI system because something that was written, some, legal contract that was written, you know, missed a few things that should have been put in there and the law firm didn't catch it. And they were saying, it's not our fault. It was the AI system and the AI system. Like you can't sue a computer. So it was, it was interesting to see. And then you get into like, if, if you're using it to help with like content creation and stuff like that, does it, you know, how, how in tune, how in touch is it? Because I think when it comes to that, that, that like selling it completely involves human emotion. You know, you're, you're selling a product. Do people believe in you? Do they believe in your product? Do they believe in your brand? And, you know, how is AI going to create a story that connects with people? So it's, it's interesting to see what facets it'll work in and, and what's going to either take a really long time or, you know, just never has a full connection with. So. Yeah, it's 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 very very crazy. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of cool. Like on your end, you get to see a lot of it and and code a lot of it and write a lot of it. But so, have you um, you know, if you were fifteen again, and you know, the, you see the world as it is today, you know, if somebody wants to get into this, what in your opinion, what is the best way to get into coding? Because I do think that this is is becoming something that is 
you know, more beneficial than, you know, your traditional four-year journalism degree in college. You know, you're going to have a lot more opportunity if you learn this, whether it be through a school or just YouTube university. But, you know, if somebody's trying to get into this and, you know, at a young enough age, what's, what are some of the best outlets out there and what's the best advice you would offer up to them? Yeah, so the best thing really is uh, there's a lot of online marketplaces that you can get courses on that, that sell courses about coding. One of them mm -hmm. is uh, Udemy.com, mm -hmm. and you can basically take a course about uh, basically like React and Flutter and Swift and JavaScript and all that stuff in terms of the languages. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's also a lot of no code tools that enable uh, development of software without really even needing to learn code. For example, uh, there's Webflow, which allows you to develop pretty cool uh, landing pages. Uh -huh. And there's Flutterflow, which allows you to um, develop apps in, and websites uh, without code. But granted, you still need to have some background in in how systems are developed and uh, the coding structures and everything, because it definitely mm -hmm. helps. Because even though you can do a lot of stuff with the no code tools, uh, it greatly benefits uh, the system and everything to be able to customize it with code itself. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that's really the way I would get into it is either starting by learning uh, courses on platforms like Udemy, which mm -hmm. allow you to learn pretty, pretty quickly mm -hmm. and apply those skills in the real world and uh, start putting portfolio type work out there mm -hmm. or using the no code tools to develop basically like uh, products also, and then gaining traction that way. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I definitely think the, the traditional four year degree, like still applies to an, an extent, uh, but mm -hmm. there's so much knowledge online that you can gain just by reading and, and watching and, and learning yourself yep. that you really don't, don't need to get into that sector. And in, in, like in, in a lot of cases, uh, cause I mean, I don't yeah. have a college degree what, whatsoever and I've done very well. But again, I'm not your normal story in that aspect. So it really, really just yeah. depends. Um, cause a lot of those big companies, what they look at is your experience and your skill set. They don't necessarily mm -hmm. look at the fact that you have a college degree or not anymore. <clears throat> yeah. I, I actually, I see it, that shift a little bit is going away from looking at college degree and more so looking at, at skill sets, which didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead and finish what you're saying. Yeah, the, 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 skill, the skills and experience there uh, definitely are the biggest things that, that matter. Um, but also, uh, there's coding boot camps too, which allow mm -hmm. you to, uh, with, which is what I did uh, very early on after I had taught myself and released that initial app. I took coding boot camps with Big Nerd Ranch, which is uh, it's about a week long each time, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's very intensive. It's like the entire day you, you, you write code with them and learn coding structures and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but that's another way to do it is uh, basically like these boot camps that take you from like pretty much not knowing much of anything to knowing a lot very, very quickly. That's cool. Yeah, I saw every, like now that you and I have been talking and we, we talk about this pretty frequently, I, I see all these pop-ups for, I can't remember the one. There's one ad that I see pop up on uh, Facebook all the time for that. You know, it's a subscription-based, learn how to code in seven days. Yeah, that's, yeah. That sounds and, and that, that, that's are pretty good to get started and get your feet wet. Uh, ultimately, mm -hmm. the biggest thing that helps are those boot camps and also the online courses that, that have like a lot of hours, a lot of material to get into. Mm -hmm. um, yep. The more you, you, you learn and put yourself through those courses and also release portfolio work mm -hmm. and use tools like no code tools and all that stuff, you can gain a lot more knowledge because it does take a lot of consistent effort to be able to learn yeah. and grasp proper design languages and coding languages also. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, the biggest it, thing, in, uh, keep going. No, I was, I was going to transition, but I was going to say it just, it looks so overwhelming when I look at it. And, and I know people probably look at the drone industry and they're like, you know, from 
from where I'm at perspective of where I'm at today. And I'm like, Oh, you know, it's, it takes this and this, but it's not that hard. You just, you know, you got to stick with it. And I imagine it's the same, but I look at it and I'm like, you know, like trying to read ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. I'm like, I don't even know what any of that means. Yeah. Cause the biggest, the biggest skill set as a developer and also a designer that you need to have, uh, today is really being able to transform uh, someone's idea uh, from nothing to something. Yep. Um, a lot of times developers like work side by side with like UI and UX designers, but mm -hmm. um, if you're able to encompass like all those kind of in one while working with those people, uh, you're, you set yourself like way, way ahead also. So that's why it's important, I think, to do those courses because you grasp a solid aspect of everything. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. So kind of taking all of that and transitioning into the full-time drones app that, you know, we're, you know, I hope at, at the latest we're online by January 1st, 2024, shooting for earlier, um, you know, still putting the finishing touches on some of our coursework, making sure that it is, um, you know, it's where we want it to be and, and we're not re releasing prematurely, but, you know, from a structural standpoint and from where we started, to you know where we're going to be at release um you know i'll kind of talk about it a little bit and then if there's anything you want to add in um you know i think just for me it's it's been a really cool experience over the last year to go from you know contacting you and saying i want a website built and i want it to be able to do this this and this and and i'm not capable of the last three things right now and it's you know more worth it for me to pay somebody who's an expert at doing this to you know, after we kind of had it built out a little bit, hey, I've had this really crazy idea and I really like working with you. So if you can do it or you know somebody that can do it, then, you know, it puts me in a position where I'm willing to take it on. If not, then, you know, I'll probably put it on the back burner for a little while and, and saying, hey, I want to develop this this platform, this community where drone pilots coming in have access to you know, the best training out there, but industry specific, not this is how you fly a drone. These are the stick maneuvers. This is how you do this. This is how you take a photograph. It's, you know, hey, this is how you operate and, you know, become successful performing utility inspections, you know, both with regular camera inspections and thermal camera and LIDAR data capture. And this is how you work and perform in the solar inspection field, you know, getting your level one, um, thermography certification is, is a big part, but here's also how you capture it and how you utilize all that information to be successful and, you know, mapping and LIDAR and all these different courses that we have coming out. So that was kind of the initial foundation piece of it was just to have an education piece on the website. And as we were building that, it evolved into, there's a lot of negativity that surrounds a lot of the groups online where newcomers who are trying to learn or asking questions and sure they don't use the search feature to see if the question's been asked, but they ask a question and a lot of the higher ups in the industry and kind of the gatekeepers, you know, just chastise them. Oh, I can't believe you don't know this. And you know, why would you ask this question? It's been asked a million times. If you're asking this question, you're not qualified to be doing this type of work. And it's like, Hey, you know, we, we all had these questions when we started, we just had to figure it out for ourselves because there was nobody to ask. So it went from having an e-learning platform to let's create an entire community around this with the foundation being education, but an entire community around this where there's support and there's going to be positive energy to help you level up from beginner, if that's where you're at all the way to transitioning into doing this full time. And, you know, we'll incorporate businesses that'll come in and, and believe in the coursework and, you know, feel like they can hire somebody who's been through some of these courses and we'll incorporate uh, an online store where you can go and buy the equipment and know that it's coming from uh, an authorized dealer to, you know, here's a rental warehouse and you can go and rent equipment for one project just to make sure you like doing it. And, so that, that was the part, I think as we started talking more and more and started building more and more, I got, I got so excited about this because it was bigger than I had initially envisioned. And, um, you know, I looked at it as an opportunity to really change the narrative in the commercial drone space. And so it was cool that I could 
I could just say what I wanted and I could be passionate about it. And I'm sure that I've probably caused a gray hair or two by going back and forth and saying, I want this and I want this. And how do I, how can we incorporate this? Because, you know, I, I get too excited about it. Um, but to be able to explain everything I want and you've been able to create and bring it all to life and then say, Hey, by the way, you've done all of this, but we need to do this and this to make sure it's more secure, or we need to do this and this to make sure that you don't run into these problems down at the end, or like just the latest thing, like, Hey, Apple's telling you update everything. We need to build this infrastructure in place so that it's not hackable. So just things like that have been really cool because it's, like you said, in almost a creative aspect, you can take my words and create a visual for what I want. And it's what I want. And, you know, but also know all the steps and all the processes that go in place to, to say, wait, this security is a big thing and data storage and um, app speeds and, and all of these things are super important. And here's all the options. Like you just had an answer for everything and you had options for everything. It wasn't just, you have to buy this, you have to do this. It was, here's all the options and here's pros and cons of all of it. So I think from that aspect, you know, as a consumer okay. or an end user, it's like, okay, you know, this, this guy's really good, but I'm also involved in this. So it was more than just, I'm a coder. It's, you know, I'm, I can bring a vision to life. And I, I know you touched on that a little bit ago, but, um, you know, with all of that, you know, I guess with your background and how you operate, you know, is there anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I mean, to, to me, it's really important to uh, bring a, a stakeholder's I idea to life. Like, uh, so like within all of my experience, the biggest thing I've learned is uh, a, a stakeholder, which, which is either the client or it's a company, whoever you're doing the work for is um, really, really uh, someone that needs to be able to like uh, see everything like on the table and be able to make key decisions and be able to see like the end vision uh, mm -hmm. in order to get it to launch. Yep. Uh, because like in, in big companies, they have these design teams and development teams and uh, their copywriting teams and everything. A lot of times those guys come together and they formulate a vision to show the key like stakeholders, which are usually the executives. And uh, I've learned that a lot of times those guys need to, you know, show stuff in the right way to like get the vision across. And then that vision also needs to compute to something that can be an end product that gets out into the world. Yeah. So that's why that's really important to me is uh, if you have a really great vision and everything and are able to communicate that and all that stuff, then you can get it out into the world uh, yeah. eventually by, you know, like working together with the stakeholder and like making sure that everything is communicated properly. Yep. No, I, I agree. I think that's probably, I mean, outside of the whole coding things, I don't know enough about that, but like the communication and, you know, staying on top of me, that's probably one of your biggest strong suits I've noticed is, you know, here's our, um, you know, here's our goals by these dates. Let's make sure we have this, this, and this in place. Um, you need to make a decision on this and this by this date so that I can do this and we can be at this milestone and, um, you know, kind of getting ready to launch. And so now, you know, we're, we're at the point where I think on the app side, we're, we're probably either pretty dang close or, or ready. And now we're just waiting on, um, you know, getting educational content uploaded and getting some of the, the back end and some of the processes finished with that stuff so that, you know, when we do launch, you know, I think we're going to have, if I remember correctly, like 60 or 62 courses, uh, 18 different industries with, um, you know, a beginner, intermediate and advanced level for almost all of them. I think, you know, like LIDAR is not going to have a beginner course because there's just not a whole lot of beginner to it, but, um, and, and offshore oil rig inspections, there's no beginner course, but for the most part, they all have, uh, you know, three levels of courses and, you know, we're also working on putting some business development and stuff like that in there. And, you know, one of the cool things we added in the, the AI feature with assisting, like you can ask questions. And so it's been a really cool experience if you're listening or watching and have an idea that you've been thinking about bringing to life. I would highly recommend, um, you know, reaching out to, to Chris and, and, having a conversation because it's like I said, I, I talked to about 10 or 15 different people who had different backgrounds and, and I was just, I never felt confident or inspired in, in who I was talking to. And in five minutes into a conversation, 
I was like, yep, this is the guy. So I, I think, uh, you know, how, I how, I'm, I'm still, I keep going. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was saying, and I have, uh, you know, like 15 years of experience in this stuff and I'm still learning as I go. So it's, it's an everyday process too. So yep. it's, it's, it's cool, cool to work on projects like this because it, it increases my knowledge about various areas in order to be even better for newer projects. So. Yeah. And it probably breaks up the, the monotony of, you know, the every single day requests, you know, about, like drones, this is a whole new thing. You get to build a whole social platform around drones and, you know, kind of take some of the best features of all the different social media platforms out there and incorporate it into this to say, you know, this and this is important because, you know, we want people to have access to this, but, you know, all these features aren't necessary. So let's, let's pick and choose what we love the most about all of them and incorporate it all into one app. Yeah, so, it's, it's going to be very, very cool with all, all that at the palm of your hand and yeah. also on the web too. It's a web platform as well. Yeah, yeah. We have the desktop version. And, and so um, for people who do want to get in touch with you, you know, what's what's the best way? I know you have a website. And, and uh, so what, what's the best way yeah, to so the, connect the best, with you? The best way is uh, either on my website, which is pixelsxcode.com or uh, on LinkedIn, uh, it's linkedin.com slash n slash uh, cjx design. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty present on LinkedIn as well. And I'm on Facebook as well, but it's a little bit hard to find me because my name is so common. So <laughs> Christopher Jones. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, I do have a Facebook page for Pixels X Code, but it's, it's not uh, super, super well known or anything. Uh, but the website is, is mainly uh, where I can be found and same for LinkedIn. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. If you guys are, are interested, go check him out. Like I said, you won't be disappointed. He, uh, he came very highly recommended to me and, you know, I, I pass on the, the high recommendation and, and we're close to bringing this to life and talking about a couple of different products in in the utility space, in the music space and just different things it, it just having conversations that sparks different ideas and opportunities and, you know, kind of resurfaces some old ideas that I've had. So, um, you know, I would definitely check him out. He is, he is legit. He gets a, a five-star recommendation from all of us here at full-time drones. And, um, yeah, so I think that'll kind of wrap us up for this episode. Do you have anything, you know, kind of going out that, you feel like you wanted to say, but didn't get the opportunity to. And, and, and same for on full-time drones. And I mean, the, uh, the, the stuff that they produce is, is very amazing in terms of high quality imagery and everything. So I definitely also highly recommend them for, for their services, uh, which will be on, you'll be able to see like that stuff on the portfolio website and there too. So yep. that, that'll be live on the main website coming up. Yep. Yeah. We, uh, we, we put, everything into one website instead of separating it. So you'll have our, our regular, you know, services and about and, and all that. You'll have our full online shop. You'll have the community, the learning Academy. It'll, it'll all be built into one website. So, and then, and then most of it transfer over to the app. So it'll be, it was, it was a fun build. I'm sure it was, uh, as we added more and more stuff, it just became more and more complex, but it was, it was cool to watch it all evolve and come to life. So, um, you know, Chris, thanks for joining me and, you know, I got to thank you guys for tuning in today. We'll, uh, we'll wrap up for this episode, but make sure you subscribe wherever you do listen to podcasts. And if you're watching on YouTube, you know, hit the, hit the subscription button, turn on notifications. I know we took about a month or six weeks off. We were working on some web stuff and then also some, some of our app stuff, getting the beta test ready to launch. But, you know, now that we're here, we'll be back at our regularly scheduled content schedule and, and have everything coming out again. So turn on notifications and, uh, and we'll see you guys again here soon.